Welcome to Networking Rx, a podcast devoted to helping business professionals like you enhance your networking skills in order to become more proficient giving and receiving quality business referrals and improving the overall quality of your life and the lives of those around you. The Networking Rx podcast is a production of AmSpirit Business Connections, an organization whose mission is to empower business success through networking. Welcome to the Networking Rx podcast. I'm your host, Frank Agin, founder and president of AmSpirit Business Connections. Today we have another great guest. As our ongoing subscribers know, often on this podcast, I will share ideas, insights, and best practices for networking, professional relationships, and so forth. Occasionally, however, I'll be interviewing a guest, awesome and interesting people, people who will share their stories, answer some questions, tell us what they're looking for to grow their professional lives. With that, if you would like to be a guest on this program um, or know somebody who would be, reach out to me using the email at the end of this program. Uh, It's uh, how I stumble across guests. Uh, People refer them to me. Um, So I'm always open to uh, talking with people. Uh, Before we jump into the program, I want to remind everybody that we are looking to add quality people to our stable of franchisees. This is a unique franchise opportunity in that it's geared for aspiring entrepreneurs or professionals to add on to what they're already doing. Uh, As I've said in the past, all of our franchisees do something else. For just a couple hours in the morning, a few mornings a week, our franchisees are operating the AmSpirit Business Connections program. The rest of their week, their accountants, attorneys, financial advisors, realtors, coaches, consultants of various kinds. If there's interest or you know someone who might be interested, contact me through email in the show notes or at the end of the podcast. Today on our program, we have Carrie Walls, and Carrie Walls is coming to us from Portland. Now, you can guess Portland, Oregon. And you can guess Portland, Maine, and you would be correct because she started out in Portland, Oregon, and um, now lives in Portland, Maine. How convenient. Uh, Carrie had probably saved on monogramming or something. It probably didn't have to change uh, certain things about your life, right? Right, right. Makes it easy, right? I'm not too confused. It's great to be here. (laughs) Well, good. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, Carrie, um, you're a business coach, executive coach. Um, we'd love to hear your story. Um, who you, you know, how you got to this place, so the types of things you do. You know, like I, I don't. Not all coaching is created equal. I'm not saying some is good. That's for sure. Bad, but people have different, at you know, different, different angles on it. Um, I think mm-hmm. in, in talking with you ahead of time, you're really focused a lot on the relationships, the relationship side of people's success. So I'll kick it off to you and let you go. Okay, great. I really uh, focus on helping people increase their success and their fulfillment. Often we focus in business on the success and being successful and, and there are things to do there for sure, but also people's fulfillment is really important and business owners often start a business with a certain intent and then after a while can kind of burn out or the joy they started the business with lose that. And I really help them to regain that and uh, which also then helps them be more successful and grow and enjoy what they're doing. And so uh, I'm highly customized in what I do. I really listen to people uh, where their business is, where they're trying to get to, what obstacles and challenges are they facing, and I just make a recommendation about how I could help them get to where they want to get to. So right. um, it, it is customized, and uh, I work with a lot of times entrepreneurs growing to the next level where they're trying to um, produce results through others. Maybe they made a bad hire and they got gun shy or, you know, they, they're frustrated with employees because employees aren't stepping up or they're getting burnt out or they, you know, just all the common things you run into in the day to day of business. So business coaching, my belief is it produces an ROI and I like to produce 
five to 10 times what people are investing as a return in, on their business or more. So really, while also increasing how much enjoyment they get out of the business. Right. Now, you've been coaching for a long time. Almost 20 years. Yeah. Yes. I was, and I, this, entire, this entire millennia, right? This entire, you know. <laughs> right, exactly. I uh, started as an individual coach in a consulting firm and rose up to eventually be the CEO of that firm in Oregon. And I replaced the founder as they were stepping out of the business. And four years ago, I went out on my own. And um, I appreciate business owners more than ever now that I've really <laughs> done it. Uh, it takes so much perseverance and tenacity and commitment. And I just really, I've learned a lot for myself. I think I'm even a better business coach having the last four years under my belt in that period of effort and concentration where you put a lot of effort out and you don't get much in return. Yeah. Um, stick, sticking with that is really important until you get some momentum. Yeah. Well, I think that's, that's probably vital in what you do in, in working with your small businesses and entrepreneurs. Um, because I think we all, we all go through that. We all go through that moment yeah. where, you know, you, I don't want to call it the imposter syndrome because that's, I think it's a little different, but it's, uh, we go through that where we, geez, I, 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 I don't want to say I'm a failure, but um, I'm not measuring up. I'm not doing the right things. And it's, you know, we, they say looking at Facebook can make you feel inferior, you know, <laughs> in lots of respects. Right. And I think business people have kind of had that, had that for years because you pick up Inc or Entrepreneur or any of those business magazines um, and they share stories of people who were booming successes and mm -hmm. it's like, well, gee, why not me? And you watch those, right. you, you read those articles and you're thinking everybody's got that. And I think the reality is everybody is dealing with the same things that you've dealt with and I've dealt with. Um, and so that's an important thing to kind of be able to convey to somebody and say, just relax. Yeah. You're fine. Right. <laughs> you, you know, yeah. you, yes. Clients sometimes don't pay their bills. You know, that's, you know, that's, right. you know, employees <laughs> just don't show up or whatever it might be. Um, right. Yeah. I think that's a big thing. Just, right when I start to talk to someone, they've done usually everything they know how to do to improve a situation. And when we've done that and we've taken a run at it three or four or five times, we start to get resigned or even hopeless about it, like we can't impact it. But generally the stuff we need to do is out of our awareness or we would have already done it. So right. it's in some sort of blind, blind spot that we have. So I help identify those help people put some other things in place so they can take action that's going to make a difference gotcha. and also give them hope. Like this is a common thing. And I, I have this one, this one guy I started to work with. He's so great. He has this really sweet um, affiliate sales website and some of the best profits I've ever seen in a business, but he wouldn't know that. I said, this is actually some of the best profits I've ever seen. Really? Yeah. <laughs> but he, he doesn't have, you don't know what other people yeah. are doing, but yeah. he's lost all the joy. And he, you know, the reason entrepreneurs, they start a business and they have a lot of joy in what they're doing. But once they know how to do it, they're kind of bored and they want to go on to the next thing. And how do you, get other people to do those activities that are so critical. So it frees you up as the owner to do the strategic thinking, to do the strategy. So you're not just responding reactively to all the stuff that comes at you in the day-to-day -day operations. Yeah. Now I see you have a master's of uh, uh, psychology uh, uh, counseling, I believe. Yes. Um, yes. To what extent does that come into play? with uh, your, uh, your practice? Well, I, I mean, I think it's really, I have both the psychology and the business experience. I read an article once about business coaches or executive coaches. They're either psychology bent or they're business bent. And I feel pretty strong in both. And I think it's a good combination because all business results get produced by people working together 
having strong relationships, coordinating action, communicating. So all that personal stuff comes, it's really important. And even when people are growing a business, I always say it's, it's both external. There's stuff you need to do out in the business and it's internal too. There are different practices you have to do. Stop answering every question or, you know, how do you delegate? How do you let go? That's like an internal process for people as well. So it's developing yourself internally, learning how to be a leader, set the vision of the organization, talk about the values in a way that other people can understand it and work from those values so you right. replicate yourself. I often get a phone call from a business owner said, I need to clone myself. Right. <laughs> and you won't exactly clone yourself, but you can have people start to think like you think. But you have to kind of get that out of you and be aware of the goals you have inside so you can train other people and develop them. And at first that takes way more time, you know, but in the long run, you're freeing up a lot of time in your future if you can do that effectively. Right. Now you work with people on the, the um, their sales process as well, correct? I mean, it's, yeah. Uh, I would imagine if you're working with small business types, entrepreneurs wear a lot of hats and sales comes into that. I mean, they have aversions to sales. And um, yeah, I think I was seeing on your uh, LinkedIn profile, st um, I think you called it allergies, uh, uh, sales um, out. Right. Well, yeah, most people start a business because they're good at the, thing they're doing, like maybe they're a chiropractor, or they're a financial planner, but sales, as you, any business owner, that's a big chunk of what you do. You always have to do it. And most of us have been sold to badly and we never want to do that to anyone. So we are a little, we, we, we avoid it. Right. I mean, I've sent, seen people spend tons of money on a website and all this marketing when they learn so much if they would just get in conversation with others. Then the website they design and what they do would be more accurate because they would have fleshed out ideas and learned a lot through the dialogue. But learning to sell from service and really listening to people deeply so you understand what their concerns are, where they're trying to get to, that takes practice. Um, so then you just make a recommendation that will solve a concern and they, they're interested or they're not, but often entrepreneurs or business owners are a little bit in survival and they have an agenda happening behind what they're saying. And generally that's not, doesn't work. We know what it's like to be approached that way and treated that way. And so... It, and it doesn't work. Right. <laughs> I was listening to one of your podcasts about active listening. You know, it's like if somebody has an agenda and you're not listening, you, yeah. the, you're, whatever you're offering is a solution to a concern over there. So there's nothing to pitch. There's nothing to say until you understand much more deeply who you're talking to. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, it's, it's all about developing the relationship. I, I tell people, you know, you get into those conversations. It's, if you create a relationship, you have an opportunity to talk again and again and again, and eventually it comes out and eventually the opportunity is there in a very yeah. tasteful way. But if you look at that moment as this has got to be the moment, I've got to say the key words and close on this. Um, first of all, you're wrong. Second of all, you're going to fail. Uh, and third of right. all, it's the opportunity to be gone forever. Um, but. And, and sometimes it's three or four years. I've had stuff come back from right when I started, when I was just like, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> so I was just talking to anyone I could talk to, but some of those relationships I've developed have referred to me, but it's been years later, but right. that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's, yeah, you need business today as much as you do 10 years from now. Um, right. Um, are there, th is there something uh, we could put in the show notes um, that people could 
look at? Sure. Yeah, I have a um, kind of a free gift that I can give your listeners on how to overcome a sales strategy and kind of my approach to sales so that okay. you're doing it authentically through service versus okay. well, that would be great uh, running an agenda. Link. Yeah, if we could get a link, we'll put it in the show notes. And uh, Okay, great. Um, Thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, if you want to kind of explain a little bit of what it is, it's – a, a little tease. Give a tease, Carrie. You know, okay. Do it. Okay. Well, I, I was actually, when I first learned about sales, I was a high school English teacher and I had an idea way back, even before I was a coach, I had a small business around teacher appreciation and acknowledgement. And I never thought I would learn to love sales. So, and I also think through coaches, lots of times care about people, but from what I hear, there are a lot of struggling coaches out there and they don't know how to sell. And there are a lot of things coming at them to tell them how to get leads, but they also don't know how to create value because the value is what's going to have people come back. Or I have clients I've worked with on and off for 10 years, but that only happens if they're getting value over that time period and their business has grown. So this is just kind of what I've learned about sales, not to focus on sales. And it just has six key steps of different ways to look at it. One of them talks about kind of the roller coaster that small business gets in where we don't have enough sales and then we scurry with all the sales activity and then we get too busy and we stop doing the sales activity. And then our business goes down and then we freak out and start scurrying with sales activity. So it becomes like a roller coaster. Yeah. And that's really hard on business owners. It's hard on the business. It puts you into survival. What you want to learn to do is be consistent, like have a certain time every day where you're focusing on sales or, you know, paying attention to it, have certain intentions, have a sales target, but all that stuff goes in the background then when you get conversations with people you really focus on them so okay. there's just some tips on how to how to really do sales more authentically and not the way we've seen it done you know just sales has a bad name like nobody wants yeah. to be a salesperson often <laughs> no and there's yeah. a reason for that well and it, what amazes me is this the whole mystique as to how you should be selling um, continues to perpetuate itself when it's really not what any anybody wants or, or maybe ever wanted. I don't know. Um, right. But, uh, you know, oh I've well. never, I've, 20 years, I've never read sales strategy book or I've never studied that. This Everything I've learned from has been from experience, what works with people, where yeah. I blew it. And then in that consulting firm, I, before I was CEO, I was head of everyone, you know, the whole company sales and helping people with sales target. And it's just what I've noticed learning to develop other sales people and kind of what they go through right? Uh, to learn to be more effective. Yeah. But it's experiential learning. <laughs> yeah. And you'll know when you blew it. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Well, where do you see uh, where do you see your business, your yourself, your business five years from now? Um, I'd really like to develop coaches uh, more. <laughs> I'm, okay. you know, having been in the coaching industry for twenty years, it really has exploded, and there's a wide variety of quality out there. And sometimes I'm a little appalled at the quality or lack of quality. Right. And maybe it might be with the co the counseling psych background, but that had me trained to do no harm. And I just hear some stories where I think, okay, coaches are in their houses by themselves talking to clients. The way I learned to be a coach was sitting around a table with colleagues, really great colleagues, and hearing, you know, discussing clients so that I got better and got more effective. 
also, I, I would just like to pass on some of the expertise I've developed over years, as well as continue to work one-on-one -on -one with clients when they really are trying to get to that next level of growing where they have multiple staff and potentially people doing what they've done. So the business has can run without them and has value by itself. So are you actively building a, a team of coaches then at this time? I have colleagues from where I was before, <laughs> a bunch okay. of us um, exited at the same time. And um, so, so you do have yeah, a I, okay. yeah, yeah, okay. we're independent well, businesses, but they're trained in a similar way. Right. And um, I, I can tell coaches aren't being trained in some of the ways we were trained. And I think uh, that would help the industry a lot because, some stories I hear coaching kind of has a bad name, like not being effective or people charge a lot but don't deliver ROI. I just think there are ways to have it be helpful because coaching can be incredibly helpful. I mean, I hear it from clients every day, like it helps them focus, their business grows, they get relief. That's how it should be, <laughs> you know. Right. There well, shouldn't be a question about what value you're getting. Yeah. Carrie, every industry has the has the black sheep. Everyone. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Everyone. That's true. The the difference with respect to coaching is there's a very low barrier to entry. That's the that's, right. that's what I see the difference as. Uh, I used to be an attorney, and there there are bad attorneys. I know that's yeah, shocking. That's true. <laughs> that's shocking that there are bad attorneys, um, but there's a pretty high barrier to entry to become an attorney um, to become a mechanic. There are bad mechanics, but right. you, know, you need to, you know, you're just not going to have a garage with no equipment. Um, right. So I think that's the, well, that's you, the you do need to assess it. I wrote an article for medium. I can send you as well. If you want for the show notes about just questions to ask a potential coach and how to um, screen for effectiveness and fit. Oh, that would be for, awesome. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to give me uh, if you want to give me the link, um, I can certainly put it in the show notes. Um, some uh, like iTunes has a limit as the amount of stuff I can put in there, but there are other okay. uh, others that don't, and we can you know uh, however you want to do it. You know, we'll put a link in there. Okay. I assume this is kind of trying uh, as I wrap up. I I assume people will be able to contact you through there. I want to be able to get your contact information out there um so yes. if they go to the go to this episode and click on whatever link we end up putting in there they'll be able to get information to contact you as well yes okay yeah i don't want to you know thanks for joining us I don't on the networking rx podcast. a lot of times i'll Please ask people to uh, give me their contact today. information and let us but then know if you people have are saying you realize when we're listening to this podcast future we're usually driving you can email them to um, us right. so at podcast phone numbers and web addresses you know that's I think I'm doing everyone a um, So it's best. <laughs> Finally, so you <laughs> never miss sense. an episode. Yeah, it's be easy sure to, to find subscribe me. to the Networking <laughs> RX I'll podcast the through iTunes, Overcast, like or however Great. you receive your well, podcast. Well, I appreciate your time here now today. Get out wonderful. and network um, with someone. Carrie Walls. The Networking RX uh, podcast. Thanks for, is a thanks for your time. Of Business. Well, thanks, Frank, for having me on.